When I shoot my Uzi, man, I do that little shoulder move. All right, I got some quick lessons from COVID-19 that I want you to make sure you jot down if you're not paying attention to what's going on. I want to make sure that you don't forget this because now that malls and, and, and restaurants and things are opening back up, I don't want this time off to be something that you forget about. Now that bands are leaving from different states and people are allowed to um, utilize restaurants and malls and shopping areas, I don't want you to, to, to forget some of these uh, things that's taking place some of these lessons that you should have been able to learn through this COVID-19 deal. I want this to be able to help you. And today I'm going to give you four or five, we'll see how I feel, four or five lessons, quick lessons, quick lessons that you can, that you can apply moving forward. Hoop loud, you. The first lesson is this. Family is important. Family and quality time is important. Whether this virus has... has has affected you directly or indirectly, well, all of us have been affected indirectly. I think it should, it, this whole situation shook us up enough to know that, you know, we're not immortal. We're, we're like this, this, our clock is gonna, is gonna, is gonna elapse one day. And the relationships we're able to build, the relationships we get to cultivate uh, with our loved ones mean a lot. Life is fleeting. So making sure you carve out time with those individuals and tell them how much you love them and spend time with them and never be too busy to say I love you to the ones that mean the most to you and be a nice, decent human being is a lesson, is my first lesson that I, I pulled away from this COVID-19. Number two, my second lesson I'm gonna pull away from COVID-19 is life is bigger than your sport. Life is bigger than your sport. And it will be a good thing for you to figure out something else that you're, you're, you're good at, something you can utilize to generate income. I understand you want to go to the league. I understand you want to go play overseas and do that. And there's nothing wrong with that. I was a person I was just like that. Failed the sixth grade in the eighth grade, special education classes. Wasn't going to graduate high school without basketball. And to think that I got a master's um, is, is, is mind blowing. I needed basketball. I wouldn't have graduated high school without basketball, let alone college with a master's. Like I'm that person to utilize basketball, to, to make my parents proud, to utilize basketball, to have some type of self-worth and value. Like, I'm that person. I'm there with you. But even with that said, what I'm telling you is you need to start dabbling in other things as well um, that you can generate an income in um, to help feed your family, right? Legal things, right? All right? So is it photography? Is it videography? A lot, a lot of you say you want to do sports anchoring and stuff like that. Like, start to... To, 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 to put yourself in that position. So after you get done playing in the NBA, after you get done playing in the league, after you get done playing overseas, that you can still do some other things to generate income. And it's not, it's not dependent upon just this basketball. Because here's the thing. Some of these, some of these uh, whether it be entertainers or basketball players, like a lot of their money comes from people filling up the stands. And now that people aren't filling up the stands, that cuts into their profit. So again, life is bigger than basketball. Um, and, and, and you shouldn't, ball is life, I get it. I, I've been there, I've done that, like, I, I get it, I support you. But at the same time, I want you to also uh, make sure that you, 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 you grow and, and, and you feed that curiosity for other things that you want to do in your life as well, not just whatever your sports in. The third one I would say is something I always knew because, you know, I came from a generation before you, and that is you can get better outside the gym. There's so many people that have been emailing me and DMing me about, you know, what am I going to do? To, uh, what am I going to do? Because I want to get better and I want to I want to continue to grow. But you know, the gyms are closed, the weight rooms are closed, and all. This. Listen, 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 listen. People were getting be people were getting better at basketball. People were getting getting better at whatever sport they played before before there were gyms. Okay, before there were gyms, there were people still getting better. So don't use that as an excuse. Some of these athletes you're looking up to. Whether it be a Kobe Bryant or a Kyrie Irving, their playmaking skills, um, their ball handling skills, a lot of that, a lot of that comes from number one, their skill set. Number two, like they just been doing it over and over again. But one thing that often goes overlooked is their creativity, their imagination, and you do that by getting the ball and going out there by yourself and making things happen, creating creating defenders of who you're playing against, going out there and getting that stuff done. That stuff, it seems hacky, it seems like hokey or whatnot, but I'm telling you, that stuff works. So 
You should be dribbling every day if you're a basketball player. You should be out there handling a rock every day. You should be running every day. You should be, you should be uh, taking, that, taking care of that stuff um, every day. That's if you don't have any injuries. And if, if you do have some injuries, this is a perfect time to nurse those injuries back to health. This is a perfect time to do that. I'll talk about this a little bit earlier, but uh, I, you know, I get some DMs of individuals and they're, they're panicking because they don't, go, they don't get to go to these AAU tournaments that they normally go to and they're worried about getting recruited. And my thing is, if anything, this is balance the scales. Because if you could go to those AAU tournaments right now, you'd be the only person there. No one else is there. So if no one else is there, it wouldn't help you in the first place. What I'm telling you is um, relationships with your coaches are most important. And I know some of you don't have good relationships with the coaches because you think pouting at the end of the bench is going to hurt the coach or whatever. Listen, even if you don't get a lick of playing time, you need to build a good relationship with your coach. I'm telling you, you need to do that. Because a lot of you are asking me, you know, about the highlight films. You send me links about, hey, Bill, check out my highlight film. And a lot of them are bland. A lot of them are like, I'm, 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 I'm going to make a video about how you can make a better highlight film. But you know what's better than a highlight film? A coach that has coached you or a coach that has coached against you, what they say about you to college coaches. That's, that's better than a highlight film. A highlight film doesn't tell, tell anybody about your character, your integrity, your work ethic. A highlight film doesn't tell you any of that stuff. And the way y'all shoot your highlight films, are they're not good anyway. Because all you do is you turn on the camera and you record every time you make a shot. These coaches have been coaching for 10, 20, I don't want to get on this high hole. I don't, I don't want to talk too much about this because it's not, that's not what this video is about. But anybody can make a highlight film with you making all the shots. Your highlight film. So you want you want positive rapport with your coaches, and so so they can speak on your behalf. That's in college as well. If you want to play semi-pro or professional basketball, it would behoove you to make sure you have a good relationship with your coach because you don't know what like, relationships they've already established that you can benefit from. Why would you want to start from scratch? Why would you want to start from ground zero when you have people in the field that have been doing it for decades before you even got there? that maybe already have warm leads or, 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 or relationships or friendships that you can benefit from. And even if you didn't play, you can still benefit from those relationships. So during this time of COVID-19, uh, a lesson that you can really pull away from this is cultivate those relationships with your coaches because they matter, regardless if you, you, you get playing time or not. And my last lesson that I'm gonna pull away from this COVID-19 that I want you to apply to your journey as a student athlete is, you know I had to throw in some academic stuff. Um, and that is, though I know you're not gonna go back and read textbooks, I don't even think that's realistic. But to have a healthy, app, app, but to have a healthy appetite of reading on a regular basis is important. And I know this because I've seen people in college that had a healthy appetite of reading when they're in high school and middle school. And I've seen, I've seen them do a lot better. I've seen with my own eyes, those individuals do a lot better in college um, than those that didn't read at all, like myself. I read my first book when I was a junior in college. Like my first like book book. I don't mean like Cat in the Hat book. I mean like real book of some size, two, 300 pages was in college. And that's not something I'm proud of, but uh, I'm telling you that because it hurt me in the long run because I spent so much time going over materials that some people can go through a chapter and read it once or twice. I'm reading this chapter three and four times, wasting more time trying to retain the information. What I'm telling you is a lesson that you can pull from this COVID-19 is building up a building up a, an appetite for reading. Um, start with things that you enjoy and then kind of branch yourself out. And that's not information just for high school student athletes. That's, that's information for college, college student athletes as well. Because like I said, man, I, I was a junior in college and I, I, that was the first time I read my full book by myself. I don't want you to go through all that pain and anguish I went through trying to retain some of the information I did in college because it was not fun. It was not, it was not fun at all. So those are my lessons that I feel like we can, we can bring from this whole COVID-19 situation. 
Again, I want to offer my sincerest uh, condolences for anyone that has been affected uh, by this, this virus um, directly, because I know everyone has been affected indirectly. Uh, it's, make, it's made us second guess the, the way we interact with people. We've got people wearing masks. I'm one of those people who's wearing masks. Just don't know what to believe. So in a moment of uncertainty, I definitely want to encourage everyone as far as um, as we get out of this and, and, and restaurants are opening up and, 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 and malls opening back up. But hopefully we can use some of these lessons I've talked about today to make us um, more impactful moving forward as far as student athletes are concerned. <laughs> Loud E.